Just for a minute, I want you to use your imagination, okay? I'm not real sure that this is the way it happened, but I, I want you to use your imagination and maybe it happened this way. One day, just imagine, one day Philemon is relaxing at his house and then suddenly out of the blue, he hears a knock at the door. And so he gets up out of his chair and uh, he goes to the door, he opens it and lo and behold, there stands Tychicus and Onesimus. Philemon was probably in total shock and disbelief as he stood speechless, just really not knowing what to say. And then Tychicus hands him a letter. And as Philemon opens the letter, he realizes that it is a personal letter from the Apostle Paul. Paul was not only the one who had led him to faith in Christ, but Paul was the great apostle who was largely responsible for the spread of the gospel through the entire Greco-Roman empire. He probably could feel his heart pounding a little bit in his chest as he glanced down at the letter. And then he looks up and he again makes eye contact with Onesimus. You remember Onesimus was his what? His runaway slave. And in his mind, he still hasn't put two and two together. A letter from the Apostle Paul. Onesimus is standing here in front of me at my door. And then he finally begins to read the letter, putting two and two together. Let's read it. Verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. But without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant. A brother beloved specially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Let me stop right there and remind you that in God's sovereignty, when Onesimus ran from his master Philemon to Roman, uh, to the city of Rome, there in Rome, in God's sovereignty, he ran into the Apostle Paul. And Paul had the opportunity of sharing the gospel with him, and Onesimus accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. And that's why Paul says, hey, he's not just coming back to you as your servant. He's coming back to you now as a brother in Christ. Isn't God wonderful the way he works? <laughs> Paul had led Philemon to Christ. Now he leads Philemon's slave Onesimus to Christ as he is on the run in Rome. And now here they are back together again. Verse 17. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, 
put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it. Howbeit, I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me, even thine own self besides. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal, prepare me also a lodging. For I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. There salute thee, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. What a privilege it must have been for Philemon to receive a personal handwritten letter from the Apostle Paul. Only two others enjoyed that privilege. Do you know who they are? Timothy and Titus. Those two also received personal letters from the Apostle Paul. Most commentators believe that Athea that we find written about in verse 2 was Philemon's wife. And Archippus was most likely their son. As I mentioned in our last message, Philemon must have been a, a very wealthy man because his house was large enough to have the church of Colossae meet in his house. By the way, it was customary for churches in the first century to meet in homes. Actually, church buildings were unheard of until the third century. The oldest known church building ever to be found was located on the banks of the Euphrates River in the Syrian desert. It dates all the way back to the first half of the, of the third century, and it was literally two adjoining rooms of a house with a platform built in it. So in other words, it was a house that was converted over into becoming a church building. But here's a great reminder for all of us here tonight. The church is not the building, but the people. The church is not the building. This building really doesn't matter compared to the ministry that takes place within these doors to the real church, the people. Paul's standard greeting is here. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, that standard greeting appears in all 13 of his epistles. All 13 of them, he mentions this same greeting. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at those two words, grace and peace. Because grace is the means of God's salvation and peace is the result of God's salvation, right? Without God's grace, we would know nothing about his salvation. And because of his salvation, we now have peace with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Sometimes we ask people when they're dying, have you made your peace yet? Well, in a sense, they can't make their peace. Jesus already made that peace for them on the cross. And so we need to understand that grace is the means of God's salvation and peace is the result of God's salvation. And then notice also by linking God the Father with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul is affirming the deity of Christ. 